allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Hassler? Here. Alderman Smith? Alderman Mooney? Alderman Donovan? Here. Alderman Jeffers? Here. Alderman Jones? Here. Alderman Stuckey? Here. Alderman Prince? Here. Alderman Rizika? Here. Mayor Leo Quorum? Very good. Look over the agenda. No approval. Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Uh, takes us down to the city administrator's report. Okay, so uh, I did some homework on the uh, smoking issue, uh, and uh, we have a meeting scheduled for 6.30 Thursday night, public hearing at the uh, Knights of Columbus Hall to discuss uh, whether or not we want to pursue this and to hear it and receive citizen input. Um, my plan is to um, present kind of what the options are. Um, there are 37 municipalities in the state of Missouri that have such smoking ordinances uh, that in, in any public place there are uh, nine that have uh, exclusions for bars and private clubs. Uh, and there's another group that put it to a vote and didn't didn't vote for it, and I have some input from the city administrators of those cities. Uh, so I plan to just kind of make a presentation of here are the issues that will be considered if the board chooses to pursue this. Uh, I don't think it requires anybody else's statements except to maybe answer questions that citizens may have. Uh, and I, unless we get a remarkable turnout, I don't know that it will last that long. Um, the uh, plans and specs for the city hall renovations have been out. Uh, we will receive bids on October the 31st. We have, I don't know, seven contractors maybe that wow. have picked up plans. So I think we'll get a, a good good number of bids. Um, on the Chadwell Lane easements, um, I have a verbal, I have a written easement from the resident. I have a verbal from the investors who own the storage sheds. And I still can't get uh, the gas company to respond. So I keep calling them and I keep calling them. And they don't know, they don't know who's dealing with it. And so I'll, I'll keep on it. But I just can't, can't quite get their response. Kind of sounds like the railroad. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, How much do we need from them? Or? It's, not, it's not much, but it requires constructing a retaining wall on their property. So it isn't like it's a lot of property. It's just couple of, I don't know, probably five feet. But then we got to put in this retaining wall. Uh, which will go perpendicular to the road all the way back into the hill. There's a wall behind their building now and tie into that wall. So the elevation of the road will be higher than their building there? Yes, the elevation of the road is coming up. And so we have to, to protect the building with this uh, retaining wall. Well, they got to have access also. They will. I mean, with the roadway? The same access they have now. Oh, okay. I mean, they, they, right now they, they 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 access that building from the front, and they have this parking area okay. on the downhill side. That'll stay there. Mm -hmm. What is okay. actually in that building? Is it some valves like and, and and monitoring uh, gauges and that kind of thing? Don't we have one right out here? Yeah, yeah. but it's, that one's bigger. Mm, right. And when you go in there, it smells like gas. Oh, but you're not smelling the gas. No, it smells like the additive they put in natural oh, gas. Yeah. My point is, I shouldn't be smelling anything, should I? I mean, shouldn't shouldn't those pipes? I wouldn't think so. Be tight. <laughs> Don't smoke. But I was there. I was there. I was there with the, those guys, and they seemed to think it was okay. They know. Okay, this is going to take a little longer than uh, I had planned, but uh, since we didn't put a closed session on the agenda, uh, I hadn't received a response to my counter proposal to the cell tower lease until today like four o'clock <laughs> so I didn't have an opportunity to, 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 to add a closed session where we would normally discuss legal state except I think we're kind of at the point where they made an offer I made a counter proposal and now it's kind of up to us to decide whether you want me to 
tell them we'll accept their counter proposal or one of their counter proposals or, or move on. The things that I asked from them was that I didn't understand in the, 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 two, the, the two renewal or the two option periods, an initial option period and a renewal option period. So I asked that they just have one option period. Um, he said, no, uh, that, that they, they need that in order for them to have enough time to com uh, complete all the regulatory and environmental work on the site that they're obligated to do. And they don't know that, that they can get that done in the 12-month period, so they asked for a, a renewal period. That sounds reasonable to me. I'd give it to them. I would give it to them. Yeah. Um, I, instead of giving them the 90-year uh, lease, I had a nine additional five years. You had a, the initial five years and nine additional, so it's a 50-year proposition instead of 90. And they agreed to that. I asked for $1,400 in rent. Um, and I asked for $350. They could have one uh, co-location on the tower with no additional charge, but after that, if they're getting $1,000 for a, a co-location, I wanted $350. So they came back with two proposals. One is we'll pay you $950 a month, and there's no revenue sharing with any future co-locations. Or we pay you seven dollars a month and give you two fifty for any co locations. So if they have seven hundred seven hundred and two two hundred and fifty. So you, you so if this if it's them and one co location, it's the same nine fifty. But should they get a second or a third co location, we would get that additional two hundred and fifty dollars. I, I don't know about you. I don't know what the likelihood is that there are going to be that many people co locating on that tower. <coughs> Uh, I would be inclined to take the higher rent and waive the, 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 um, the revenue sharing for future arrays that might go on the tower, but that's just me. Are we bound to that 950 whether that tower goes out of service? You're, you're bound for the lease period. As long as it's there, they're, they're leasing the land. And including the renewals also, not just the original nine years and then the second we're, five years? We wouldn't be entitled to whatever rent is called for in the lease for the period that you're in. So once once we go a two percent increase, you know they can't go back. I'm not sure I that's the question. No, in other words, you know we have that initial nine year period, correct? Five years. Five. Five year. So are we only bound for that five year period, or are we bound for the entire fifty years? Well, they have termination options uh, we don't except for failure to hey. to, to, to perform to perform other conditions of the lease so they can default okay. by failing to perform they can opt out after five years so we're only guaranteed the first five years of, of income so if they pull out and leave that tower there no if they pull out they have to take the tower down and restore the and restore the site and that's, I think that language still needs to be improved, but they've already agreed to some language that would, right. that would do that. Um, they agree. So you recall that their original lease said that they would uh, lease it, and then they would do a 7.5% uh, increase at the end of the second term. Um, I, I asked for 2% a year for every year after the initial term. After the initial term. Uh, so it was only like a point and a half or a point and a third for, for what they had proposed, and you only got it in the second. You know, as the five years turned over, the way I proposed it was you will, after the initial term, you'll give us 2% a year. Um, but then they agreed to it. Um, We had mentioned landscaping, the, the site, and they have sent me literature on the decorative wall that they're going to put up. Uh, but rather than be responsible for landscaping, they increased their option payment from $1,000 to $3,500 so that we could spend the money in landscaping however we want to landscape. Um, and Uh, 
other than that, um, I think what's just the, 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 question, the question is, if you're good with the renewal periods that, that I just outlined, if you're good with the 2% increase every year after the initial period, the question is, uh, are, are, do you want to accept the offer of $950 a year for, for the, um, the month for the uh, I have a question. How do we come out on the title to the land about reverting back? Mark a pound that we can we can do this without violating the covenants of the uh, okay. yeah. the, the title. The only thing that I noticed is that his picture, this example, I went and found a 150 foot pole just like this, and it looks much bigger than this one does. I don't know if that makes anybody any difference, but I happen to know where there was one, and I went and looked at it. It's considerably bigger and taller than what this appears to me. If you judge that fence at, you know, six or seven foot tall, uh, is what I was basing it off of, or a eight foot building in back of there, and nine foot. <coughs> Up to you guys. It's uh, tell me I think what it's to a, do. A good proposal. I, you know, yeah, I they've countered the 950. You know, if you figure it up, you know, you'd be 80 months into it, waiting for somebody to come up and sign onto that tower. You're twelve thousand dollars ahead already. Yeah. So I, I think I that the 950 is. I think that's the way to go. I, I'm. I mean, I we we'll make we a motion, Bob. I agree. We need a motion or what? Well, no, you know, you just give me, you just give me direction, and then I will respond to them. They will give me a clean lease that's got the, the language and then in we'll it. Come back and vote. We'll come back and you get to vote. We'll have the actual document <coughs> presented. Go to you. far. Go far. I'd say so. Yeah, do I think so? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, man. Yeah. Uh, well, where are we? well, you're on the city administrator's report. Um, we, we sent out the letters on the TIF, uh, 300 people got letters, um, lots of questions, phone rang for about three days in a row, with, <laughs> people came in, what does this mean? Uh, tried to explain it to everybody. Uh, we've received about seven requests that the properties be sequestered, you know, set aside to, and so they're not subject to the double, uh, double test on, 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 on re meeting the base and, um, we will have a, <laughs> commission meeting on November the 13th, 14th, 14th, because the last day for turning in, and uh, we'll formulate the proposed boundary changes, which will then be subject to review at a public hearing November 26th. on November 26th. And uh, we'll, after that public hearing, the TIP Commission will be in, in, in making a recommendation to this board on whatever changes they're proposing to the TIP, tip boundaries. Um, Mayor and I attended, the, they had a joint, about once a year they have a joint industrial development corporation chamber meeting and we were invited to come to talk about the possibility of housing development. Uh, Mark looked, looked at it kind of every way, consulted with his partners trying to come up with a way that we could do what was being anticipated. Uh, he concluded that uh, we really can't do that. And so um, I informed both parties that were interested, that we'd be glad to sell them the land, uh, but that we couldn't, uh, basically, as Mark put it, you couldn't participate in the financing of the development. And, uh, and, and neither one is responsive yet, so we'll see. How do other cities do it? I don't know that they do. I always hear about these deals. Oh, they gave them the land and then they put up a building, yada, yada, yada. Is that just hearsay? Or, I mean, it seems well, like... I, you know, I, well, you know, you have anything to say about that? You don't know if anybody does I've, that. I've never heard of any municipality participating. Washington in County developed an industrial park and would then offer the property to people, and people would, they would lease it to people on a long-term, like, 99-year lease. The people would put their building on the properties. Uh, they, never, they never deeded the property to them. The industrial development, commercial developments, you'll see more interaction, but 
<coughs> because, and, and I don't know this to be true, but there's a, a very large body shop, restoration shop that just went up <coughs> on Highway 67 between Farmington and Park. Right, just south of On Hare. Right, yeah, so right. you know the place right I'm talking about. Yeah, and exactly. the story is... The right. city gave them the property because yeah. they wanted them there. Now, that's just a story. I'll, I'll have the know. answer to that at our next meeting. Okay. I'll, I'll call the yeah. city administrator. Find out because, I mean, I, I always hear about this stuff and I feel like we're mm -hmm. missing out. Make a note. Make a note. <laughs> okay. Does it make a difference, though, if it's one individual location or in, you know, what we're talking about is multiple? Well, I think uh, I, I went into some detail at the last meeting about about that. It, it just it, it, it's impractical for the city to be in, in the private development of a residential subdivision, uh, it, it, and I can go into details with that. Um, it, it's also um, a, a problem if the city was going to donate land to uh, a business for any purpose because it's the city's property you can't give away assets for any purpose to anyone. Um, so there may be some sort of tax increment financing, there may be some sort of financing mechanism where the owner is somehow getting a good deal for that development but that doesn't mean the city gave it to them, if that makes sense. So yeah. there's, yeah. there's That just people, may be a figure people, of speech. Yeah, but people say those things. So. Um, th this particular project um, would be too heavily involved in the development as the developer uh, and, the, and the owner of the property it just is not practical for us to, to do that uh, because the way it was contemplated is we'd own it uh, but the, the developer would be uh, somehow figuring out how to do the improvements while we still own the property, but I don't want to necessarily get into all the And, and I understand things, what you're saying, and I respect your advice on it. So I'm not right. I'm not trying to go against what you're saying. It's just I look around and I see other municipalities that seem to be expanding, and you hear these stories. And again, I don't know the details of it, but it just seems like you, other you, communities are doing things to. <clears throat> promote such deals and yeah i mean there's a lot of tools you can use but those are almost always exclusively industrial okay commercial uh because when you have a residential development generally residential developments are uh, they use more of the resources right. of the public entity than the tax revenue they the additional tax revenue they generate and so from a municipal standpoint, it's much better to, you, you have more to work with to incentivize a commercial development through some tax abatements um, because you're going to get the revenue in some other way, either through exactly. sales taxes, or through property taxes, or if you're just trying to increase uh, investment in the community and additional jobs, if you have an in, industrial development, you know, like City of Arnold, um, had a purchased property and then leased it. Well, they, it, well, I think you guys probably had, a, I think, had a similar thing where you own the property, so there's no real estate taxes on city-owned property, and so that automatically, you know, it takes that off the bottom line expense for that business. So there, there's ways to do those things. I don't know. I don't personally know of any that involved residential development. Okay, but it's possible with commercial. Well, I guess it's possible with residential, but why would anybody do it? No, I'm saying with you commercial, know. though. Then. Commercial, there's a lot more evidence. Because gotcha. there's sure. a lot more tax, tax uh, yeah. abatements and, and incentives, and there's a lot more money you, flowing through. You that. probably wouldn't buy a house if you didn't own the underlying real estate. Exactly. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So, um, I received a request from Travis Henderson, who bought at a tax sale the property on uh, North Third Street um, before you get to the levy. Um, oh, yeah. And That's right. it, 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 attached to your report is a, a copy of the GIS. And you will notice that there's this 30 foot um, old right of way that runs on the north side of Travis Henderson's property. 
He's desirous of putting in a driveway and a garage in the back, but doesn't have any access. So he's asked if we could abandon that right of way. It was Lecomp Street. It was originally platted, and I put at your table before the meeting started the the, the, the plat from the recorder's office. Apparently, it was originally intent, in, intended that the comp would go through all the way to um, Second Street, which is here called something other than Second Street, <laughs> Laporte Street, and. Uh, mm -hmm. That never happened, so, um, or it did happen a long time ago, and it was so long ago that nobody remembers it. Uh, but there's no evidence that a road was ever there. And uh, so the, the procedure is for the city, should you decide to do this, to adopt an ordinance at a future meeting abandoning the right of way. And should you do that, the rule is that the property reverts to the adjacent landowners 50-50, 15 feet to, 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 to one, 15 feet to the other, and of course we're, we're the other in this case. And that would give him, uh, pursuant to, to, to state law, that, that the right to, to use that 15 feet. Yeah, he, he, he wouldn't have the right to use it, he would own it. He'd own it, but we're not deeding it to him. Right. But we just said we can't give land away. Well, it's vacating a road, uh, so it's a completely different process. So we're not giving property away; we're vacating the road. And whenever you vacate, like the road is a public thoroughfare, so right. to speak, and it's really a very definite easement. Is really kind of the way it's treated legally. So it's it's our it's the public's road. Uh, and will be until the end of time unless you vacate it. And the process is you, you vacate it and the property reverts to the adjacent landowners unless, in rare circumstances, if that road was obtained from one landowner, like say you did eminent domain and you took that property, then it just re reverts back to that property owner. Um, since this was platted, I don't know when, uh, uh, that we would just pass an ordinance vacating that road uh, and then it re reverts back to the adjacent property owners of which the city is the other adjacent property owner. So uh, this, this gentleman would receive that, that 15 feet stretch along his property line. And, and this, is, this occurs fairly regular basis in municipalities. Um, the, the only reason why you would not want to do it is if there's ever uh, a thought that you would want to construct that road there. Uh, it's been abandoned for so many years that in theory, it could be uh, deemed abandoned by uh, a judicial ruling if, if somebody petitioned the court for a, a ruling that's abandoned uh, anyway. So there, there's a possibility it would be, it could be vacated. So, so somebody could petition the court based on our lack of use, claiming it's abandoned, would they then, the court would give them the entire 30 feet? No. Okay. And no, still go back to the yeah, 15. Still, be, uh, still revert back to. Well, it's, Jason it's not connected to any other street on the other side. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really, and you've got a creek going through it. We have these. There, there are a number of situations like this yeah, throughout yeah. the city. And we find them every now and then when somebody wants to. I never knew about this one. I knew about Ziegler because I used to own that property, and Ziegler actually would have been where my old driveway was. The only, the only. Thing I want to make understand is is back there on that back corner on that ditch, we have to pump that once in a while. Now we we take the pump through Chuck Smith's property, private property, to get there. Uh, you know we've not had a problem with that before, but they're on high ground. I don't you know if they wanted to say well we're not going to let you do that anymore. What's that going to do? We need to get back there because this is all that when this floods and we have a big flood in there it fills up washington street and we have to set that big we bought a six inch pump to pump this flood plane out when we had to can we still go in on the property we own yeah that's what i was gonna well say. that that's where we're now we're talking about if you if you go back there with the pump now the pump it's perfect right now because it sits up and i believe it sits up on chuck, chuck smith's property when we do that uh and there's never been a problem but 
I don't know if we could get close enough to it. We could have been all the right of way up to 50 feet. Yeah, I, w I would feel the, better because if we could come in on the, if we had to, if we ever lost that, and, it, and this might not happen in our lifetime, but somebody else, it, it could happen to. Well, we want to. Chuck may not always own that property. That's exactly my, my whole. Can, can we retain the right to use it? No, I mean, if you're going to vacate the, the road, then you're. you're well, we could we could vacate the road and get an easement back from it. Right, that's what I'm saying. Why can't we just? We're still going to have our 15 feet. Yeah, yeah. There should be plenty of room there. We're, we're we're having 15. No, you're not going to have your 15 feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, city, the city owns the adjoining property. So you yeah, well, okay. levy at. I thought you were donating them the whole 30 feet. You're not donating them no. anything. Let's make sure we're that's there. Why, <laughs> that's why I it's, it's vacating it, so it's right. just the road it disappears and the property reverts back to the adjacent landowners because that's. Basically, legally, that's where the, the road came from. Oh, but I wanted to, Gary. I'm confused. You know where the pump is. You know how we get in there where the pump. If Chuck were to say, well, you're not going to go through my property any, and I'm not saying he would ever do that, but you just never know. Like Randy said, we don't know who's going to own it. But would we be able to still get in with losing this? That's what I want to make sure we could, on our own property, get back there if we had to, to pump that. Yes. Be okay. Okay. We just have to elevate something back there. And get yeah, we'd have to build up a, a mound to put it on to get it up on there. Or that's the only question I have. So he's just getting 15 feet, and we keep 15 feet. Right. Correct. Okay. But how is that in conjunction with the levee that's there? Is that halfway up the side of the levee, or is it is it close to the levee? I drove down by there, and it looked pretty close to the levee. On the back end of the property, it's very close yes, to the levee. Right. It's probably up on the levee, yeah. I would think. Yeah. On the back on the back side of that property. Why can't we just grant him an easement to get back to his garage? Because I was involved in one of these in another area and stuff, and it got into a pretty lengthy legal thing because of proving who actually owned each side of the property, and it went on for months, and then uh, they couldn't prove anything. They couldn't, somehow or another, they couldn't come up with the actual owners of the property and proven that that property was taken off of each of those deeds. So it stood at a stalemate. We gave an easement. And that was all we could do. Or we received an easement. But it was a city street, and you couldn't <laughs> prove who owned it. I, I, I don't know. What the situation was. The, the cleanest thing to do, from my perspective, is to vacate the road, and that road vacation ordinance is, is reported with the recorder deeds office. And then, so any title search is going to say that uh, that we're going to reference these parcel numbers, and they're going to uh, any title search is going to show that it's reverted to adjacent property owners. And if there's a dispute with regard to that, it's speed involves us. Yeah. We did that before, didn't we, Martin? We've done it twice since I've been here. Yeah. Well, can we can we can we shorten that road, Martin? Can we go back here and say put a line in here? Well, to I, keep. I think you could. I mean, I don't know. I, it seems to me you could abandon part of a right of way. You you can yes, you can vacate part of the road, uh, but then you'd have a, a stretch of road that goes from nowhere to nowhere. <laughs> And then you certainly be a dis at a disadvantage of uh, when we're sued for abandoning that roadway, right? Because it's uh, we're going to lose that anyway. I mean, because the rule says you each property gets half, right? Right. The adjacent property right. owners receive, receive the statute says you wouldn't lose until it somebody wanted to sue you for that last fifty property. feet. <laughs> I just something to think about all you know you either do it all or you don't do it you don't have to do it because you may need that road at some point in the future or you want to support someone's effort to take a piece of derelict property and improve it and he's been fighting a battle well he didn't he, he got in his head you know I mean just looking at those lines on there it looks like on the right side of that property is there's more property on the right side than don't don't trust the lines. Don't yeah. Right. <laughs> they uh they're not. Okay. Yeah. Because if you go by that part of his house is over the line on the yeah. north side. You can't. Yeah. No, they're they're not accurate. That's happened. 
I know it's happened. It happened to me. Yeah. Well, I just want to make sure that, uh, and and maybe it's a position, and may, maybe we could take our pump down to the left, down on the levee. The, the levee's a wide road. We might be able to drive right in there, and I would like to make sure before we make a decision, we go down and scope all that out because for future, because there's gonna, be, there's no getting around it. Water's gonna back up one day, and we're gonna have to get a six-inch pump down there, and we're gonna pump that. That's just the nature of that beast down there. We don't want to. We don't want to cripple any future board or future city, any adventure here. Is there a time maybe we could, what Alderman want to, could go look at that with you? Well, yeah, that's that's fine. You just pick a time. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to make a decision on this tonight. Oh, no, there's no one. Okay. No, we can't. We have to uh, pass an ordinance. So okay. Yeah, he made the request. I, I'm bringing it up to get direction right. from you to either take the next step or not. And if you want to take the next two weeks to give that consideration and yeah, take a look I, at it. I'd like to do that anyway. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. That'd be good. Okay. Okay, finally, it's not on my report because I got the call today. Uh, the state of Missouri has funds that are allocated to counties for the purposes of improving bridges that have a drainage way that's at least 20 feet in diameter or across. Um, I got a call from the County Commission today it says we don't have any bridges that qualify but the money's still set aside for us and it can be sent it's been inside the city he said and it's like a three-year cycle he said, so I have to notify the state that we're either going to do something or we're not going to do something and he said I'd like to make that those funds available to the city to redo the 4th Street bridge this, this bridge uh, all he needs to hear from us is yes. <laughs> uh, if, if you if you if you notify the state, we'll take the money, uh, but it will be specifically for improvements to that bridge because they've got to designate which qualified bridge structure. So how much money is it? Well, at the end of three years, it will be three hundred and twenty thousand dollars from the state and another seventy thousand that the county has set aside as the soft match on on it. So it's a total of three hundred ninety thousand dollars. So how much does it cost to do the bridge? I don't know. To replace okay. that bridge, you can do that for, the, for, well, we can solve the problems of that bridge for $390,000, no question. Now, whether we can replace it in total, I, I don't know. But the issues we have with it are how the sidewalk has narrowed the street. We can build a pedestrian way outside of the bridge abutments. Well, I think we need to do that. Uh, yeah. We can we can go in uh, underneath the bridge, and you've got some spalling concrete and some exposed yeah. rebar. I mean, you no, can it, we can we can do all those things why wouldn't well we within do that, that dollar. I mean, I say yes. Yeah. So what's the three-year period about? I don't know. It's not. It's just a program that he described to me on a telephone conversation, and he said it takes three years before you can get the funds, but the money's put in your account if you tell them you're going to use it. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah, that's right. But he said, I don't want to do it unless I know the city's, you know, I'll, I'll, I said, I'll bring it up tonight. <laughs> so I mean, we why, must, would, why wouldn't you say yes? So we, we, is it up to us to do the project? Uh, no, actually, I think the county has to do the project. Okay. He said, look, you know, I can do this without your knowledge, but I don't want to do it without your knowledge. I want to get your, your consent. So. I'll say yes. Okay. That concludes my report. Oh, very good. Thank you. This is a long one. Thank it was. Is Steve here? Steve up there. Steve Wilson. You know, every two weeks I wonder, are we going to have enough to talk about in my report? Not, not Mark, this week. Uh, <laughs> you know, over here. It's just save a little bit already. for the next meeting. My goodness. Okay, Steve. Uh, last month we had a month of September. We had a couple of water main breaks, one on Washington, one on LaPorte. Uh, that would be pretty common uh, for this time of year. Um, I got a question on that. Yes. I noticed we went from doing cement cement patches to asphalt patches. What's the, is that a better, is it faster, is it, are you we on the docket that, for that? We did asphalt on Park and Lafleur. Washington you did asphalt? just to match the new asphalt that was in place. I noticed, yeah, in Washington we did an asphalt patch and we just did one down here too. Did you do water work right here on Market Street? Uh, yes. Fort, uh, yeah. 
Yes. And it's got an as asphalt patch. The one on 4th Street we did as a hurry up because of the homecoming parade and everything in that area that weekend. What about Washington Street where we put we went across the road right down? That's that's what he's talking about. Okay. It was done for the parade. Okay. Right. Well, I didn't know. I didn't, is it okay? I was wondering. So, so yeah, we got a couple uh, had a couple of water leaks. Um, still experiencing a few issues with the lift station for the industrial park uh, as far as materials being uh, put down the sewer that shouldn't be. Uh, we continue to talk to the, the source, try and get a resolution made out of that. Um, let's see, we checked all our generators, uh, tried to get everything ready for, for the cold temperatures in winter. Uh, went around, made rounds, checked all our heaters and all our buildings. Um, heat tape will be put on valves that are exposed uh, in the coming weeks. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll, we always seek and prefer voluntary compliance, but it is a violation of the ordinance. Yes, it is. So at some point, if you're not getting cooperation, we'll have to use another tap. Yes, I delivered a copy of the ordinance to the owners of the building. Uh, the UV system still acquiring uh, pricing on the replacement for the damage that was from the uh, from the flood. Uh, hopefully, I called the uh, some higher ups in their company trying to get that uh, sooner than later. I expressed to them that it was time sensitive and that we had to move on it. Uh, as far as the UV system, we've also ordered and had delivered the materials to put a roof over that unit. Uh, as an attempt to try to keep more water out of there. So I'll know more after I talk uh, to the company tomorrow. So. Questions? All right. Thank you, Steve. Stand up. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so you have my report in front of you. Um, you also have the bar chart for the um, visitor traffic. And um, we, in the month of uh, September, we sold uh, almost 100 uh, passports for the historic site tours. Um, October has already started out very busy. Um, I have some events there that Alderman will want to be aware of. In addition, at the time that I uh, made this out, I was not aware that um, the hospital has added uh, an event downtown for local children to do trunk or treating, and that will be at the Audubon's parking lot um, starting at 5.30 tomorrow evening on October 26. And um, the fairgrounds have a series of uh, craft shows and also um, a, spa, a spooky house, a haunted house going on all weekend up at the fairgrounds. Um, I attended the IDC chamber meeting, the um, IDC uh, meeting with St. Genevieve High School about our uh, business retention and expansion findings and also the TIF meetings, plural. and. Um, in addition, uh, attended and participated in the French Colonial Studies Conference, and uh, Tim Good, our future National Park Site um, Superintendent, was here at that conference and um, confirmed with him that they are on track to accept the first uh, piece of property for forming the National Historical Site in the spring, probably in March or April. Uh, and the museum has uh, informed me that um, following the Christmas festival, which is um, December 8th and 9th this year, the museum will be open on a daily basis until the Christmas festival. And then following that on December 10th, they will close so that they can begin the process of taking all those exhibits, they're refurbishing some of them, and of course, eventually moving them over to the new expanded museum learning center. 
Uh, and then I wanted to also uh, just remind you that um, on November 10th is the Cookie Crumb Trail that is sponsored by the Downtown St. Genevieve organization. And the Saturday after Thanksgiving will be Shop Small Saturday, uh, not just uh, here, but all across the country. It's sponsored by American Express, and we participate in that each year. And just today, our big box arrived with our um, supplies for uh, all the swag items that local businesses can come by and pick up. So those are available at the Welcome Center on a first come, first serve basis. The Chamber Office and Downtown St. Genevieve also sign up as neighborhood champions for that shop small event. So um, if we run out at the Welcome Center, there will be other materials available. Any questions? Sandy, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you also have my report in front of you. I apologize it was not uh, finished in time to go out in the agendas, but uh, pretty standard. One thing that we did need to add, I've got a couple of agendas on, or a couple of ordinances on the agenda for tonight, uh, one of which being to enter into the lease agreement for the cars. Uh, the original uh, budgeted item was for a uh, uh, Ford Explorer. Uh, when we went to actually order the vehicles, the Explorers are no longer available for this year. They're re redesigning that for this year. So they are not offering the Explorer in a lease or in a uh, in a fleet capacity. Uh, so we have uh, specced out a Dodge Durango, which is the the closest uh, that we can come as far as a comparable vehicle. Uh, it's comparable in price, and and all of the equipment is it was pretty standard. So um, just to to make you aware that there is that change, so it would be for one F-150 and one uh, Dodge Durango. So other than that, we, we uh, as I reported in the last uh, staff report, uh, lost Officer Basinger, but we have replaced him with an officer named uh, Brendan Corbett, who lives uh, in Jefferson County right now. Uh, I think he'll be a, a pretty good fit. He actually starts tomorrow, so once he gets in and sworn in and working, we'll have him come, come and introduce himself. So does anybody have any questions? As Martin reported, we... Uh, have the bid specs out for for uh, contractors. I've learned very quickly that I am not a contractor or an engineer or an architect in any way. As as, uh, as it's probably good that I'm where I'm at. So uh, I, I think it'll work out, and, and we're excited to get that project started. Any price difference in those two vehicles? They're real comparable. Uh, not not enough to really report. There was I actually. Uh, omitted the uh, in-car camera for the budgeted amount uh, so I had to go back and, and amend that for the lease uh, price it's not going to raise it tremendously from what we budgeted for that and we'll, we'll certainly be able to make up for that in other areas um, we did get a or, or are about to receive a uh, reimbursement from dispatch for the MDTs that we bought uh, it's going to be eleven thousand some dollars for for the MDTs that that we uh, purchased so that'll be Beneficial. We hope to, to go on and finish out the rest of the replacement plan with that. And uh, I think everything else is going pretty smoothly, I think. So we still, um, we still good on our bid dates due back? So far as I know, I, I mean, if we, it, I think I probably cut it a little bit close. I mean, I was hoping to get all the bids in and, and get everything prepared to, to have you guys vote on that for the first meeting in November, knowing that there's only one meeting in November and one in December. Um, that was kind of my, my thought process, but I think I kind of shortchanged some of those guys on getting all the prices that they need. So we may need to, to explore extending that once once the date comes, but we'll see who actually comes through. We can still do the November thing, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, we're struggling with how this is going to work and until we get a contractor. I'm not exactly sure about working around activities of City Hall and they may ask that we vacate the premises for a day or so um, at, at, at some point in the process but I don't know that yet and I'll let you know if they make that request thank you for your time any questions oh I have a question yes sir I heard uh, today that uh, methamphetamine is rearing its ugly head again 
It is. Um, I mean, we're not seeing the meth labs that we had back in the day. Right. But what we are seeing is uh, like mail order crystal meth. They said uh, it's all being made in Mexico and shipped in the form of yes. crystal meth or ice or whatever you call Correct. it. Correct. And, and like I said, it's being shipped through the mail through UPS, through FedEx. Uh, you know, we've reached mail out to... Mail order drugs now, Martin. What is the world coming to? <laughs> Medical marijuana. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, we're working closely with our drug task force. We've talked to the post office about trying to take more proactive stances, uh, steps to, to combat it on our end. Uh, obviously, the post office is... is uh, its own entity and and they have their own investigators and and they were not real keen on us coming in and and uh, doing any investigations on our on our terms but uh, they're cooperative when we do discover something or have any information it's like anything else there's a couple of inspectors for an entire region and so when we call it doesn't take the priority so uh, we're just kind of at the mercy of, of what their postal inspectors want to do uh, but like I said, we have a great relationship with our drug task force, and they have a good relationship with some of the inspectors there. Um, and we have taken off a few a few packages that that were being sent. You know, we we were able to intercept those, um, and we've we've had pretty good success the last couple couple months with uh, getting some of the ice off the street. Um, obviously, still trying to combat heroin as 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 much as we can. So, yes. But we don't have meth labs that I no, know. No, that's what I heard. So that's a good thing. It's not locally produced meth. It's coming yeah. in from out, mm -hmm. out yes. of the country. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Any uh, committee reports? Uh, nobody here for public comment? Unless the student has to say Pam's passing out for our closed session, I believe. So we'll take care of that. And Got a second? All in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you. Takes us to old business. This will be the second reading of Bill Number 4248, an ordinance approving a bid proposal from Axon Enterprise Incorporated for the purchase of four tasers in the amount not to exceed $5,512 for the St. Uh, Genevieve Police Department. Motion to approve. Have a roll call, please. Alderman Donovan. Yes. Alderman Jokerst? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Stupe? Yes. Alderman Prince? Yes. Alderman Ruzinka? Yes. Six yes, zero no's, two absent. Bill number 4248 now becomes ordinance 4180. Thank you. Takes us to new business. Uh, bill number 4249, Northern's calling for the general election of officers of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri to be held April 2nd, 2019, providing notice to the general public. All in favor? Aye. Takes us to bill number 4250, an ordinance approving a bid proposal from Turnkey Mobile Incorporated for the purchase of two mobile data terminals in the amount not to exceed $8,410. Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Bill number 4251, an ordinance approving a tax exempt equipment lease purchase agreement with First State Community Bank. Motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bill number 4252, an ordinance of the City of St. Genevieve, Missouri, amending Schedule 3 parking restrictions, Table 3 dash E, handicapped parking. Second. All in favor? Aye. Is there any other business? Any other? If there's no other business. I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.